this is something that I uh, really, really value and I practice. And also, not only um, do I practice it, I, uh, I use it in, in the lives of a lot of people that, that I work with, um, especially in the performance realm, but also in other realms as well. And it's something called a time audit, a time audit. Now, what is a time audit? It's exactly what it says. If you've ever been through an IRS audit or your company has, what do they do? do? They come in and they look at where every single penny went. That's what they do when they audit you. And then they have another question. Were those pennies going to good things or bad things? And bad things in terms of the IRS, you know, they don't care what you buy. They just want to know if, if a bad thing for them is a penny that wasn't taxed. So they're looking for pennies that should have been taxed and you didn't tax them. So that's their deal. I'm looking for something different than that. When I talk to you about a time audit, I want to know if your pennies of time, okay, every minute, every minute is a penny of time, right? It adds up. My mama used to tell me, son, save your pennies because pennies grow into nickels. Nickels grow into quarters. Quarters grow into dollars. So make sure you save all of them. <sighs> smart lady. I wasn't always that great at it, but smart lady. Same thing with minutes. So here's the deal. Here's what a time audit is. I want people to think about what are the just the few main things that you are saying to yourself. You want to move that ball down the field. You want to move that needle. You want this area of life to thrive. You want it to get fixed if it's broken. You want it to get better if it's good. All right, let me give you some possible areas that you might want to think about, okay? One is something clinical in your life. Maybe you want to get less depressed or less anxious or get in control of your eating or drinking or web porn use or whatever addiction it might be you know there what you want to change your stress levels you want to change your blood pressure okay what are what's what priorities do you have is there something in that realm may or may not be that you might be fine in those areas but how about the second category you're talking about your relationships is there a relationship a marriage or with a kid or building community or building a support system or finding a mentor, or mentoring someone yourself? Is there something in that category that you want to get better? Okay. The third category would be reaching some dream or goal. You want to start a business. You, you want to write a book. You want, I was talking to um, a good friend yesterday who's uh, he's a big star on Wall Street. You would you know, in times read about him and like in the Wall Street Journal. And uh, in other words, he does kind of big things in his field, right? Well, guess what? Guess what he's working on while he works, this, which is something I'm going to get back to in a minute because you do have time even for what you're dreaming, even if you have a job, is he's writing a screenplay. And he was talking about being involved in that process. So what dream... Have you always had? What goal are you thinking about? You'd like to see happen. You want to start a business. You want to redo. You want to redo the kitchen, remodel it. You want to, you know, win a marathon. Could be any goal. All right. So that's where we start. What are the things that are important to you? Doesn't have to be one thing. I have on my on my my prayer uh, list. It's really not a list. 
it's a it's a big file. The way I do it is I have it I start with the priorities. That's what I was just talking about. What's important to you, what you want to move down the field. And then through the days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I have those priorities interspersed in there of uh, spending that day particularly focused on praying for those things. Okay, a priority list would look exactly like that for you. That maybe it's your marriage, maybe it's your health, maybe it's your spiritual life, all of that, that you have these categories. All right, so that's setting the target. That's setting your priorities. This is what matters to me. Now, from there, the time on it. If you have said that, um, let's say your dating life, we just did an event, you can find it on boundaries.me forward slash dating on it called how to get a date worth keeping. Let's say you want to improve your dating life. All right. So here's the time on it. Or let's say you want to, you know, get healthy, whatever it is. Here's the time on it. I want you to start to keep a log and keep it over like a couple of weeks because it's hard to get, you know, a pattern in a short amount of time, whatever the right, I mean, if your patterns are the same every week, a week will do. And just write down what you did. Where'd your day go? Where'd you spend your pennies? Well, and then I did this and then I, this news thing came across my internet feed and i clicked on that and i read that and then i read an article and then okay those 45 minutes you know reading something about the kardashians and then i came back and then um i was gonna do my fill out my uh my tax thing but then um a friend of mine called and you know i talked to talked to them for a while and so you just write it down there's no judgment here this is an audit Okay, you're not judging anything. You're just trying to understand and face what is reality. Now, then when you get that done, at the end of the two weeks, take your priorities and match it to the time that you spent on it. If we say, I want to improve my marriage. Okay, what minutes and hours went into improving your marriage? That could be a variety of activities. Could be reading a book, could be going to counseling, could be meeting with a marriage mentor. It could be you and your, your husband or wife having date night. Okay. It could be you decided to do an evening walk together. Um, you want you decide to do a family meeting, whatever it is, whatever the activity is. There's a lot of things, activities that are load on. But how much time was invested in it? How much time was invested in it? You know, in the financial world, when you look at time, that is the biggest driver of financial success because something happens. You know, if you've got, you invest in something, even in a, you know, a small return and you stretch that out over time, it starts compounding. Go Google, you know, what if you took your, your five bucks a day that you're spending on, you know, coffee somewhere and put that in a mutual fund, go see what it turns out to be in 30 years when it's time for you to retire or something. You won't believe it, but it's all about time. One of my favorite verses says, making the most of the time because the days are evil. And what that means is that we are suspended in time right now at this point in human existence between when it was created to be perfect and there was a fall that happened in mankind and we fell and we became less than we were designed to be. And if you don't believe that, just pick up a newspaper. <laughs> the whole front page 
is going to be about the gap of we should be behaving like this, but we're behaving like this. So and so CEO is sent to prison. So and so murders somebody. So and so poisoned the water supply. You know, it's there's a gap in where we ought to be. Okay, so what that passage says is the truth of that we only have so much time living in the gap of imperfection, imperfect marriages, imperfect parenting, imperfect careers, imperfect performance. We only have much time living in that gap. And our goal is to raise the bar and continue to get better making use of the time because the days are broken that we live in. And then ultimately, in some way, the way that we use this time to get better, and we don't understand all of this, but we're going to go into another dimension when we die that's going to, in large part, have to do with what we did with this time. And the best scoreboard for that is the fruit that we're getting along the way. But it comes from time. And it doesn't take a lot. I said, you know, take your five bucks and put it in a mutual fund over 30 years. You'll be surprised. But we tend to be all or nothing thinkers. If we can't, well, I don't have a day to devote to that. Well, then devote one and a half minutes to it. Do something. Okay. I just want you to at, get real with yourself. When we say we're wanting something, it better show up in our calendar and oftentimes our checkbook. One of the first things I would do a lot of times with people, find out what's important to them, sit down and say, so tell me what's important to you. What's, what matters to you? What do you want to get better? And you hear this. And then I say, okay, I want to, uh, I'd like to see your calendar over the last year and I want to see your checkbook. I go, why? I said, because if you want to know what's important to somebody, you look at their calendar and their checkbook. Because it's where they spent time and resources. And if you got, you know, 40 hours a week on, you know, uh, binging TV shows, but you say getting healthy is the most important thing for you, where, where's the three hours a week on getting healthy or working on a relationship? So here's the bottom line on this. I want you to draw a line, draw a line from your priorities to the time that was invested in moving those priorities forward. And here's, I'm gonna be a little bit mean here. Some of you is gonna think this is mean. And we'll start it with a caveat is, I promise you, you may be the exception, okay? Some people are in horrible seasons of life where they don't have time to do anything other than manage crises. Maybe somebody's ill, or maybe you've, you know, you've gone through trauma or there's, you know, financial meltdown because of COVID or anything else. Okay, I'm not, I'm not talking about that where you really don't have, because of the crisis you're dealing with, you don't really have discretionary time, okay? So please don't feel judged by what I'm about to say because I'm not talking about you, all right? To make that clear. I've had periods in my life where I just didn't have time other than try to survive something either in me or my, you know, family network, whatever. I mean, you know, I've had times where within a couple of months, you know, three people in my family died and they don't talk to me about goals you know, at that time. Okay. So I'm not talking to you. Here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where you do this audit and you're spending time on stuff doesn't matter. I mean, you enjoy it, but doesn't move your priorities down the field. One of my pet peeves is I can't tell you how many people come up to me and say, oh yeah, you write books. I, I'd love to write a book. You know, I got a book I want to write. I've been wanting to write this book. For, I go, why don't you write it? They go, well, I don't have time. You know, I work. I go, I mean, I'm just being honest with you. I've written over 40 books and um, I've never, ever, ever not worked full time while I wrote those books. And they go, that's, it. I go, in fact, you know, <laughs> 
it's usually it's only novelists that take time off quote to write a book because that is their work most of us especially in the nonfiction realm we work so let me tell you a little story about one of my favorite examples of this and then we'll go to some calls john grisham john grisham this is why that excuse of i don't have time just doesn't fly with me him and a lot of other people I know and myself. John Grisham was an attorney and a state legislator in Mississippi. Two pretty full-time jobs in a way. State, state legislators, not full, full, full-time, but you know, he's got two careers, politician and a and a and a attorney. Always wanted to write a book. Well, you know what he did? He didn't have time. Oh, yes, he did. He got up. It's either, I don't, you can find the story somewhere. It's either a half hour or an hour early every morning. And he wrote one page. One page. Well, at the end of a year, he had finished his first novel called A Time to Kill. You might have seen the movie. There's another great part of the story about perseverance because it was rejected by 30 something publishers before anybody decided to print it <laughs> but those guys are sad now one page a day you want to write a book have you got time to write one page today one page is nothing see we usually have time we usually have time to connect with our kids we usually have time to connect with our spouses we usually have if we don't think all or nothing and we start to add up the pennies and they get to be dollars. So figure out what's important to you. Check your, do your time audit and see.